That's right everyone, Dragon Ball Super the Manga Chapter 79 is here, and in terms of overall story additions, not much occurred in that aspect. But that being said, it was a little bit more on the action side after a couple of chapters of exposition and establishing for what looks like to be, surprisingly, the final act of the saga, given that the bods over at Shueisha have said that the saga is actually going to be wrapped up before that movie comes out in April. So, at most, four chapters. Gotta admit, didn't expect that. Wow, are we ending this already? But before we get started, I wanted to tell you all about our soon closing holiday collection of merch over on MasakoX.com. There you can see our holiday design on clothing, mugs and more. Do check the link in the pinned comment for details. And this design, remember, is only up for another four days, so you've got until then to get it. After that, it's gone for good. Thank you. And oh yeah, uh, read the manga on Viz's online portal. It's actually really cool, so you should really give it a look. Chapter 79, Gas vs Granola. I gotta say, these chapter names have been getting more and more bland over the months. It's certainly not like the old days or the anime where the episode titles are utterly ludicrous. These are just more descriptive. I'm getting old. Where we last left off, we got to find out that indeed, Gas was bestowed with the ultimate power that Granola got. He's now even more stronger -er 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 -er. I mean, on the playground, the Cerulean would have been toast. As for the Saiyans, we have plenty of twists and turns unfold in that aspect too. Shockingly, Goku chose to step out of the battle when it was clear it wasn't all about him. In fact, besides his tussle with Granola earlier on in the saga and him defending against Gas, Goku's not really been at the front and centre of this arc. Heck, even his father has had more significance and importance to the story than he's had. Like, yeah, that's pretty refreshing. And I like Goku. And Vegeta? Oh boy. This has been even more positive for the prince after what we saw in the Moro saga. But in any case, we can now start to find out what goes down in chapter 79, our last chapter for 2021. Let's do this. We begin this month's chapter with Alec very, very far away from the battlefield. He chose not to be nearer to it for the sake of his dear and precious wine. Well, to be fair, so long as it's not Arcosian Prosecco, then you probably might not want to get any debris in it. However, in terms of excuses, it's still pretty bad. But yes, Elec also needs to take care of something else before he can dare go closer to proceedings. What these errands are exactly, we don't know. But this is just telling me more and more that this will probably mean that he ain't gonna be going back there really. He's gonna bounce in case Gas fails to win against Granola, or there's something else as part of his plan. He's managing from the shadows, basically. Speaking of Granola, he is eating the only sensu bean that Vegeta and Goku have left, whilst Oil and Maki are being proper underlings and about to pound on an old man for information, as well as most likely because they really want to. But now, with Granola fully recovered, he is able to rescue the old man and push the two heaters away from the situation. Yet, he could have easily killed them, given that he knows they were all involved in his mother's death in some way. But hey, I guess this is part of his redemption arc or moralistic shift for acting like a proper good guy here, as is demonstrated when Goku is being skewered by gas. Oh no, I'm being turned into a go kebab! I don't want to be food! I want to eat food! You know, he totally say that. Granola is now also reunited with oatmeal for the first time in quite a few chapters, having previously hurled him to the curb aside for the sake of looking edgy and cool. But now, He's looking more cool with oatmeal. You see, Granola? It's better to be by your friend's side in times like these. Also, it does actually show in the narrative sense, yeah, you're going to have a really cool scene. His right eye now changes to be like his left eye, basically having double sharing gun, really, whilst Vegeta is looking all proud and smug at what he just did. Oh yeah, I did that. That's my boy. Uh, Vegeta, you do know you have a trunks, right? In any case, Goku is tossed aside like some melted ice cream and begins to fight Granola on the ground and produces some rather impressive looking manifested shields for the conflict. And Granola's hand is looking rather bigger than it should. Is he about to unleash Starfinger? Uh, yeah, Brandon, you might want to look into that for the volume release. Uh, that's the letter of the manga, by the way. You see text in the manga? He did that. Needless to say, though, this chapter is mostly about fighting, and the fighting does look actually really good. And we are seeing that with both of the contestants wielding what they know best for this ultimate showdown. 
Yes, because we are heading toward the final confrontation, it seems. And this is either going to be that or the penultimate encounter, in case Freezy Pop shows up. The Saiyans have pretty much tapped out for the time being, based on that, if nothing else happens. They're basically done. With many blasts of ki, it's not enough to break the shield, so Gas turns it into a javelin, which Granola then grabs and uses it back against Gas, who then resorts to kunai, because he's a weeb. The end is nigh! Now this is where Granola might have been lacking earlier against the Saiyans. Oatmeal is there to provide extra intel for him for the Cerulean and his surroundings, including the fact that Gas was coming in like a wrecking ball. Yes, I know that's a dated reference, but it's factually accurate. 2013 happened, okay? Then more cool teamwork happens, with Granola being told that the Kunai and other projectiles are outside the dust cloud, and that gives him time to assess them and then grab all of them in his hands. That's really cool. And uh, they were missing an opportunity here. That could have been a really corny but awesome reply. If it were up to me, I'd have had Granola say, These yours? You dropped them. And all the while, the Saiyans and Monaito are watching on and figuring out what Granola is exactly doing and how he has improved now he's back to full power. Oh, that reminds me, Goku. Why don't you heal yourself like you did before? Go and help Granola. Oh, wait, no, you can't because it's not convenient to the plot. I should have known. That's how it works. Also, Vegeta has deduced that since Gas only just got the ability to be stronger than anyone else, he doesn't know how to use this power yet. Instead, falling back on things he already knows and has perfected over the years. Granola, if you recall, had months to figure out these powers before the Saiyans showed up, so he got to understand his power set a little more, as well as his energy well. Yeah, basically, experience is outdoing power here, and Gas is very reluctant to change or adapt, which is something that will ultimately be his undoing. I think it's clear as day. He's not a true martial artist or a fighter, or even likes fighting. He's just a grunt who doesn't like anything unfamiliar. Until he doesn't. Yeah, he just now does a point-blank key blast in front of Granola. Which doesn't really do much, actually. It's mostly for effect. I mean, come on, Granola's clothes are still in one piece, and all he got was a little headache. Ah, yes, of course. Dragon Ball trope number 230. Holding back your power is what's happening next, of course. As far as Gas was concerned, he had failed his mission to kill Granola with his own homegrown powers, so now he has to reluctantly resort to new and unusual strength, which he really isn't a fan of, and he then somehow gains the power that Granola did. Oh, and with that wish, he somehow gained the same powers that Granola did. Eh? Is that just something any strong guy earns these powers? How would he gain the exact same techniques? Surely time would have flowed differently for each other, passing different strengths and different timelines? Okay, that didn't make much sense. But odds are we aren't going to see every single move, so that's not exactly the worst thing that could have occurred, I guess. Oh, unless you just show that you basically could use Hakai, which Vegeta is guessing Gas did. What? Okay, okay. Here is when Granola tears off his clothes like the Saiyans do. Copying. That's Dragon Ball trope number 192. And to cap it all off, Dragon Ball trope number 193 is the fact that clothes removal leads to a sudden boost in power when the character gets serious. Granola is now pushing back, and here begins the moment when they shift in and out of visible light like we see in Z all the time. Dragon Ball trope number 456. Only now Goku and Vegeta can't really keep up. Ah yes you two. How does it feel to be like Ten Shinhan? Well, Vegeta does reveal and confirm from earlier that, despite the better power, Gas is not a particularly good fighter. He has no idea how to use these powers that he's not familiar with, but Granola does. So, it's quite clear that without outside interference or Elect getting in the way, Granola is going to whittle Gas down and get his revenge on all of the heaters. But that, we'll have to wait for the next chapter. All in all, what Granola did throughout this chapter has pretty much redeemed himself from all of the angst and annoyance that he put us all through for the past several months. That's the downside of having chapters come out monthly, you see. You're left with a lot of downtime to fester on a character that really grates on your psyche. Now though, it's obvious that Granola isn't going to be turning back to how he thought previously. A lot of you out there were really concerned that he would pull an about face and turn on the Saiyans, and think that all Saiyans were bad despite what he heard. But everything about his life has changed so considerably, well, oh, I mean, whatever's left of his life, am I right? 
Not only do we get a wholesome reunion of he and Oatmeal after chapters of them divided, we start to see that despite Gas being technically the stronger of the two, Granola is the more adept and experienced when it comes to boots on the ground as it were. What do I think of this ultimately? Well, it's quite obvious to tell why Gas failed to beat a weaker Bardock 40 years ago. We've realised it now, you don't even need to tell us Toyotaro. We can imply that, and the audience deducing stuff from the plot is always the most satisfying part of finding out about a story. You see, Gas, despite having the power to overcome anybody he goes up against on paper, is too stiff and stubborn in his approach. He wants to beat his opponents using only his attacks and techniques, and really nothing else. Yeah, when he does use other techniques it's pretty powerful, but he doesn't like to do that. Sure, those manifestation powers and weaponry made out of nothing are nifty and unique to him. You certainly know you're fighting gas when you see those. But if you're going to keep using them and only want to use them, then the other guy's surely going to adapt to that, right? That's what Granola did in this chapter, and it's clear that Bardock did the same thing 40 years ago. Since he's considered to be the most adept Saiyan going at the time of Frieza's Zenith, I mean, gas didn't stand a chance. And despite he promising to do better than back then, He's falling into the same pitfalls and undoings now. It's like he's forgotten his promise to Elec. Granola is a Cerulean, a bounty hunter. And despite he gaining powers instantly too, he does seem to quickly figure them out on the fly, as you would on the streets. It's your job. Gas, however, is mostly just a heavy for Elec. He doesn't see much action as he should do. And that's why I think Gas will ultimately fall, despite being the stronger of the two. Now, speaking of Elec, he chose to stay very far away from the battlefield, hasn't he? Now, even though we don't know his business, what he's attending to, you can assume that this move is to stay far behind the picket line, not to get dust in his wine, like he said. It's a cowardly move. It means that he can make a quick exit if anything goes south, leaving everyone behind to their doom at either Granola's fist or gas blowing up the planet. However it goes, Elec will be safe to run the heaters as always. He can always find other lackeys, right? Now I must say, to see the Saiyans being relatively light in the action department is rather strange. It's almost like they are experiencing what it's like to be a human character in Dragon Ball these days. On the sidelines, acting as movers of the plot. Wow, I never thought I would see the day that both Vegeta and Goku were doing this. It's so surreal. And yet, it isn't, given the context of the story. Like we mentioned in the last chapter review, both of the Saiyans know what is expected of them in this battle and in this environment, and when they are and not needed. It's quite clear that now we're seemingly heading into the home straight of the story, that the Saiyans aren't going to be the main catalyst or combatants, save for something catastrophic getting in the way, like Frieza showing up. This is obviously a story for the two rivals of past decades to sort this out on their own on a relatively equal playing field. They both had the wish, they have got equalish power, unlike before when Gas was the clear stronger of the two. But hey, Granola's learnt from the Saiyans in one respect, he tears off his unwanted clothes, just like Vegeta and Goku did in the earlier portions of the narrative and forever. You see? Granola's learning from them. Shame he's got less than three years to live, but oh well, that'll be dealt with later, I hope. This is just getting me more and more concerned actually, now we're talking about lifespan, that 7-3's place in the story will not be expanded upon again. So much for that then! I guess he's more and more likely to turn into a plot MacGuffin now for the heaters. Kinda of sad really. I would have liked to have seen a resolution from him and his character, and where he is in terms of place in the story after Moro's ultimate betrayal and him becoming... Vol fodder. Finally, for the chapter itself, I think it's a good and heartfelt way to wrap up Granola's newfound constitution and outlook on life. He is reunited with Oatmeal. He knows what he can do and what he must do. He's no longer burdened with his past and he knows who his foe is. So for this character, he's had his beginning, his middle, and we're now starting to get to his end, either through closure against the heaters and gas, or him coming to terms with his inevitable death for the sake of power. Accept his mistakes, learn from them, and perhaps have some consequence in Dragon Ball for once. Or not! We all thought that with Miris' actions back in the previous saga, but... Uh, we should have known better. Well, hope springs eternal, I suppose. But what did you folks think of this chapter? Did you like to see Granola finally get a grip on his life? Or is this looking like to be a rushed end to you? Let me know in the comments, and I shall see you next month for chapter 80, as well as my predictions prior to that, spoiler free. And until then, folks, 
Catch you later, and Happy New Year.